Hey, and welcome back to this camera series, and today we're going through substance. So in part one, I already set up the UVs, and now we're gonna be looking at substance, then in part three, we're gonna to touch on Mari. So today we're gonna to be going through just the substance, how I made it, it's gonna be a quick look at it. If you wanna see a longer start to finish thing, then check out the Gumroad. The model is for free up on there, but if you want the substance files, the Mari files, everything, all the videos, textures I used, all that stuff, it's up there as well, um, available to purchase. So yeah, check that out, or you can just get the model for free if you want. If you do, then please leave a rating that stuff really helps. Cool, so let's get started. So first things first, I'm inside of Maya and I'm assigning colors based on the different materials. So this is a workflow I've touched on previously in another video, so I'm not gonna go over it too much, but it's super useful and I've used it in work and on personal work. It just speeds up the workflow, especially when you're working with UDIMs and instancing materials across. Uh, it just makes that really, really helpful. So yeah, I recommend checking out that video. I'll have a link in the description. So when that's done, I've got it inside of Substance and I've baked all my maps. ID is a funny one to get working. Um, again, that video goes through it all, but it's a bit finickety. And when that's done, then I can get started with texturing. So this video series wasn't supposed to be a Mari versus Substance thing. It was more to demonstrate that you can texture in either. That said, I have seen some flaws of both pieces of software and I will be touching on them both, the pros and the cons, uh, but in this one, we're just gonna be looking at substance. So now that I've got that set up, then I can just drag a material down. I've got this folder that I've instanced across all of the UDIMs and that way that whenever I assign it to one UDIM or um, texture set as they like to call them, then it applies to it to all of them. So then I just need to start masking off these materials that I'm plopping down and you can use the color selector inside of your mask, which references the ID map that I've baked. And that way it applies that material to just that color in your ID map, super useful, really quick. So as you can see here, then I can quickly get black plastic on everything. I can get metal on just the bits that I wanted to set up to be metal that like I'm seeing in the reference. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. And I've got my reference always off screen or on screen sometimes, just making sure that the textures are going right. The good thing about Substance, especially as I found over Mari, it's quick, but it also means that you can kind of look dev on the fly. So I'm really just starting to build up these materials, starting to drop in new fill layers is kind of what I use generally. Sometimes I'll use the base materials they have inside a Substance. I like to use just fill layers because then I get control over everything and I'm just messing with the sliders to try and get it looking like the reference. So one of the big things on this asset is the bespoke displacement that is in a few areas, especially on the main body. It's a really odd one. And as you can see, flashing up sometimes the ref there, it's a strange pattern. It's got all these little kind of four, three pronged sort of shapes. Uh, so I use Substance Designer. So this is a really sped up thing of it. I'm not a Substance Designer expert, but I did end up using it because it was much quicker than doing it in, in Photoshop. And I found the result much nicer and you get it tiling. So I made lots of different shape nodes to match all the different shapes I saw in the reference and then used a tile sampler to just kind of spread them around with different inputs and that worked quite nicely. So yeah, I was actually really happy with what I got. It took a few goes back and forth just when I got into Substance the first time, it didn't look perfect. But yeah, just the fact that you can quickly go in, tweak that. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed actually using Designer. So when that's done, I can take that over into Substance Painter. Here's one downside. It seems weirdly difficult to get images into Painter. I don't like it. Uh, I really don't like it. It makes me angry. But I got it in and then I can start putting that into a height channel to get my displacement. And with the new Substance version, you can actually show it as displacement rather than just bump, which is great. So you're actually seeing what's going on. Really recommend doing that. And it's not too draining on your computer. So you can see here, it's a bit soft and I do go back and forward and change that a bit. But for now, what I can do is I'm just changing, first of all, the texture set resolution to see if it's the resolution that's affecting that. And it's still quite soft. So then I'm adding a sharpen filter just on the height map. And that kind of helps a little bit. It also saves me going back into designer when I just want to make a small tweak like that. So that's really cool. So now I've got it looking how I kind of want it to, then I need to mask it off because it's not supposed to be everywhere. <laughs> In Maya, I didn't specify with the material ID which bit was going to have just this pattern. That would be one way to do it. So I'm going to have to paint it by hand. Now, Substance has this really cool tool called the Geometry Select, which is a nice way to do it. So I ended up using that. The problem is when you've got edge loops and stuff like that, it can get a little bit fiddly. Mari has a much better way of doing this with the edge orientation. So props to Mari for that. So this was a little bit painful and I'm not gonna show it all because it took a little while to do, but here's me speeding up, going through it. Uh, yeah, and then I get the displacement only where I want it. 
So while just making that pattern is great and all, that's not the only detail that's going on in the surface. I'm noticing in the reference, there's loads of tiny little bumps. So what I've done is I've just added a new fill layer and I've put in a mask with some noise to just raise the height a little bit in certain places. You can see I'm also making it white. I'm not gonna leave that like it is. It's just a really nice way to quickly see where the detail you're going is because it stands out from the black. If I were to just make it height, it would be a bit more difficult to see. Uh, and here's the final thing, just getting a little bit more texture in there and that's working kind of nicely. And this is kind of what I do in Substance and Mari, just get a base going and then start building it up to make it look like the reference. So yeah, next up, there's some more details I need to add. So I'm just looking at the roughness map here and I'm gonna start breaking it up with some noise that's way too shiny at the moment. So I need to go in and play with that. And I can play with the levels of the texture and I can change the scale as well, just so that it repeats a bit more and the details aren't as big. When I've got the scale and stuff looking how I want it, then I can just use the opacity slider to set it a bit nicer and play with the blend modes to just get it sitting over the value that I'd already picked as kind of the base value because I don't want it overriding that. Just want it blending it in a bit. And you can see here now, it's just added a little bit of detail and a bit of breakup to that spec, which is quite nice. And obviously lighting is a big part of that. So you can just mess around with your lights and change the IBL if you want so that you can see how it's all kind of playing together. I find that quite useful just seeing how it works in different lighting setups. So I'm gonna start projecting now some of the logos that I'm seeing in the reference. And I've got this one on the top of the camera. The problem is the image that I'm using that I made myself in Photoshop is a little bit thin. So when I've got that down, then I need to try and thicken it. So rather than taking it back into Photoshop, what I can do is I can basically just blur the mask that I projected into, and then I can just levels it up. And then that way it just expands the boundary. And that was a nice little trick to basically just stop me having to go back to Photoshop to redo that. And so yeah, there are a lot of different logos and kind of fonts on this. So I just need to go and project those. I'm doing them all in one layer. Uh, these you can't instance because Substance doesn't let you instance kind of hand-painted details. So I'm just adding these on top of the instance layer stack that I already had set up. Substance's projection tools are a bit shit because you can't scale them, or at least I couldn't work out how you could scale them in one axis independently. So if I wanted to stretch the texture out and stuff like that, I just couldn't find a way to do it, which is really frustrating. Yeah. Also, if you do purchase the full version of Gumroad, then that texture and all the other ones I made does come with it. So you don't have to make them yourself. So yeah. That's a cheeky plug for myself. So next up, we're adding some dust and kind of dirt using Mari's smart masking, which is one of the best features about it. So I added just a plain fill layer with a bit of white and I'm just trying to get some of this crevicey dirt that I'm seeing in the reference. I did end up adding actual geometry for dust in Houdini in the end, which really helped sell it. But I do want to add some of it into the texture. So the good thing about smart mask is like a lot of substance, it's just kind of dials that you're moving up and down. So with a bit of playing, adding in some different textures into the texturing slots and playing with the way that it works with the ambient occlusion curvature that I previously baked, I can get something quite nice. This is a little bit full on, so I do end up scaling back a bit because I don't just want it looking like a standard Chernobyl style asset that you're seeing on ArtStation and stuff these days. I wanted it to actually look like the reference. So I'm just adding some roughness to the glass to break that spec up a little bit, which really helps sell it. I also made an opacity channel for this to export, but didn't end up really needing it because I use a separate shader for the glass and a separate one for the body. Then I could just dial that in into the actual shader without using a map, which is much cheaper. So on the back section of this model in the reference, I've got this little bit with this six by six kind of extruding lettering. So I wanted to go in and add that into the height channel. So the way I can do that is I just make a plain fill layer with the height raised a little bit. And then just in the mask, I can just paint that detail in. So I decided to do it in two separate layers, one for the square bit that it sits on and then one bit for the actual lettering. Also there's a rim kind of around this dial next to it. So that's gonna be included as well. So by holding shift in substance, you can draw straight lines. And that was really useful for doing things like this. And then I'm just going around the edge of this. There is a steady stroke, which I'm not sure if I ended up using in this bit, but I certainly use it later on. And that just helps me kind of go around the perimeter of this dial to get that height detail in there. Because as you can see in the reference, it doesn't have the pattern that I put in earlier. So by just putting this on top, then it stops that being there. And now in a separate layer, I'm just adding this six by six font using a projection into a mask for another height fill. Yeah, and it actually, it looked pretty good. I didn't know how it's gonna turn out. So I'm quite happy with that. So I've got the same sort of thing for this dial on the side of the camera that has kind of this embossed or whatever the opposite of embossed is, arrow that I painted in. The height is a bit strong here at the moment, but it just helps me see it a little bit better. So I do have steady stroke enabled now and that really helped. It still doesn't look perfect. Uh, in an ideal world, I would have made a mask for it with a texture and projected it, but I just really hate Substance's projection tools. So bad. So I found this a lot quicker and just easier to work with. 
uh, yeah, it kind of it turned out okay. Yeah, I was kind of happy with it. So I'm in the final hurdle now and I've got this top flap with this really interesting pattern on the top. And the way I ended up making this is I masked off another fill height layer and using some of the kind of cell details, I'd started laying them up in the mask with different fills you can kind of see here on the right. And I'm just kind of multiplying, adding them on top of each other, using sharpens, using blurs to really get a result that I was kind of happy with. Took a few rounds of fiddling with it and playing with the different scales of each of the fill layers that I'm layering on top of each other to get something that I was happy with. But in the end, actually, I thought it looked pretty good considering it was all just using procedural noises. And that's one thing that I'll give substance is procedurals and stuff like that are great. Uh, yeah, and then here on this top metal kind of panel, I'm just adding some general scratches to break up the spec on it a bit. And you can also see I've got this running down kind of brush metal pattern, which I've also added into another height channel just to really help break up the spec when the light hits it because it's quite shiny. Uh, and I found that really, really helped. It might look a bit full on close up here, but in the final render when you're zoomed out a bit, it looks kind of nicer. And this I did find in a few other areas, I had to change the scale a little bit so that when you zoom out, you can see it a bit better. But yeah, here's the final thing. And overall, super happy actually with how it came out. I'm surprised how much I enjoy using Substance for this project. I thought Mari was gonna be my go-to and we'll touch more on that in the next video, but um, I had some issues there as well. So overall, both of the pieces of software have got their pros and their cons. The biggest pro for this, uh, the price, what is it? It was like 15 pounds for the whole month to use Substance Painter and Designer. So you've got to give it props for that. Whereas Mari, we'll, we'll talk about Mari's prices in the next video. Also the speed at which I could look dev and texture at the same time. And I basically took this straight into Redshift and didn't have to try it once. It came out perfect the first time. Whereas Mari, I couldn't say the same about, but uh, they all have their pros and they all have their cons. Really glad with how it came out. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to make a very similar thing inside of Mari. And as I've said, you can get all these files on the Gumroad for a small price, or you can just download the model for free if you just want to start it all from scratch yourself. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I've been Mike Wild. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them below. Discord link below, Gumroad link below. Yeah, cool. Take it easy. Cheers.